This week, I'll show you how to use speed lights for shooting in a small space. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, this week we have a great question from Tom and Rhonda in New Haven, Connecticut. We're starting to shoot more portraits. Do you have any tips for setting up a small studio in a house on a low budget? Well guys, great question. Absolutely, we can show you some tips. In fact, a lot of people have a very similar question and they all have the same themes running through them. And one is that they wanna be able to shoot in their house in a very small room and uh, low budget. And also speed lights are another thing that people ask a lot about. You know, They won't wanna go out and buy some uh, nice high-end studio strobes, but wanna use those speed lights that they already own. And so that's what this episode is all about, using speed lights in a small space to shoot portraits. So let's head over and get started. All right, well, before we get started, let me show you how we have everything set up. Now, I totally wanna emulate what it's like to work in an actual small room, something you'd find in a house or maybe a small garage. And so what we did was we built a 12 foot square room. So that's 12 feet wide, 12 feet long. And I put this Les Nessman uh, little piece of uh, tape right here so we know where the imaginary wall would be. And so we're gonna keep everything inside this 12 foot square. So we're really actually working in a very small environment. And even we built this really not up to code ceiling here. And so what that allows us to do is to bounce light around. And so we can emulate what it's like to have an actual ceiling in a really small room. So next up, let's take a look at the equipment that we're gonna be using. All right, well, I have a bunch of different cameras and flashes here on this table. And what I'm doing is I want to remain true to the spirit of this video, which is we want everything to be realistic for most consumers to use, non-professionals, maybe weekend shooters, people that are trying to shoot maybe senior portraits and things like that. So we're not using really expensive equipment. In fact, we're going to be using a Canon and an Icon. This is a Canon Rebel. This is the T3i, and this is the kit. So it's the uh, camera and the kit lens, 18 to 55 lens that comes with uh, a lot of the kits. And then we also have, this is the Nikon D7000 also with the kit lens. So this is the 18 to 55 that comes with a lot of the Nikon kits. And then what we have are, uh, we're gonna be using a Nikon SB900 when we're shooting with the Nikon. And we're gonna be using the Canon 580EX2 when we're shooting with the Canon. So these are top of the line speed lights. So they're a little bit expensive, but I still think they fit within our, the spirit of what we're trying to show here. And then the other thing that I have here, this is a Nikon uh, wireless speed light commander. This is the SU-800. And this is gonna allow us to shoot with our flash off the camera. And uh, we'll be doing that with the Nikon. We also have a wireless commander uh, for the Canon, but I didn't bring it with me today. So we're gonna be doing all that stuff with the Nikon. Then we also have a lot of light modifiers. So this is a Gary Fong collapsible light dome. I'll show you how that works. We have uh, this right here. This is a Honol Photo. Um, this is like a snoot, I think is what it's called, and it's gonna help us shape the light, and I'll be showing you some tricks with that. And then also we have something that's very common. This is an umbrella adapter, and it allows us to put this on a stand, and then our flash on top of that, and then it allows us to use an umbrella on that stand, so we can actually shoot with an umbrella with a speed light. So we can take an umbrella like this guy here, and then uh, we can mount it to a stand like this, and put our flash on there. So I'll be showing you some tricks with that as well. And that's our basic equipment. And so we'll be basically using an off-camera flash and a camera that you can get uh, for a very reasonable price. So also helping me out today is our model. Her name is Julie. So come on out, Julie. And uh, so Julie's gonna be helping us and we'll be taking some portraits of her. So are you ready to get going? Yeah. All right, well, let's get going. All right, well, let's get started by using a flash that's mounted right on our camera. And uh, what I've done here is my settings are pretty simple. I have my camera set to aperture priority mode, which is AV for Canon cameras and A for Nikon and other brands. And then what I've done is I've set my aperture value to 5.6 and then my flash, I just have it on full auto mode or full TTL mode, ETTL mode. And so let's take a picture really quickly and I'll show you the results of this. So if you can go right back very close to that wall there. Now watch what happens. There's an issue that we're gonna face here. So look right at me. I'm gonna shake the camera just a little bit. And when we do this, you can see that this picture has an issue. And that issue is that the shutter speed in aperture priority mode is slowing way down to around a tenth of a second. And so if I have any movement in the camera, it shows up as blur, just like that picture shows us. And so we need to eliminate that 
by doing something, and that is to increase our shutter speed. Now, what I could do is I could increase my shutter speed by putting my camera in shutter priority mode, which is TV on a Canon or S on other brands. Then I could just set my shutter speed to something faster, but the problem with that is now I don't have any control over what my aperture value is going to be. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put our camera in full manual mode. So don't worry too much about this if you're not sure how to shoot in manual mode. This is going to work in our small studio environment. We don't have enough time to go into depth about why these settings work. But if you trust me on this, I think you're going to get some great pictures. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my shutter speed to 200th of a second. And that is the sync speed of this flash. Don't have to worry about what that means at this point. Just trust me on it. And then I'm going to set my aperture value to 5.6. So I have a fast shutter speed and a nice wide open aperture to get shallow depth of field. And this is going to work out just nice. Now the reason I set my shutter speed that high is I want to eliminate some of the ambient light that we're getting and only get the light from my flash. So let's take that picture again and see what happens. So Julie, look right at me. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. Now that looks pretty good. Now the cool thing about an on-camera flash is that you can put your camera in manual mode and you can set your shutter speed and your aperture value to certain settings. Now normally you'd have to make sure those matched whatever the ambient light is. But we're not using ambient light, we're using light from a flash. And so the flash is going to adjust its power output to match the settings on your camera. Now this won't work all the time, but in a really small space like this, it works great almost every single time. And so you can get away with it and it really will help you out. Well, now let's take a look at how we can improve on this picture because it's just sort of flat light. It's not a great picture. So what we're going to do next is we're going to bounce the light by moving the top of our flash around. Now normally your flash is going to have some kind of button um, to make sure that it releases and so you can move it and you can also tilt it. So what we're going to do at first is we're going to uh, move it to the side. So I'm going to bounce light from this wall onto the side of Julie's face. So again, I've moved this so it's bouncing this way. So look right at me, Julie. Beautiful. I'm going to take one more shot by backing up a little bit. Great. Now when we look at these shots, you can see that the uh, contrast went way up. We have a lot of light coming into uh, one side of Julie's face and not on the other side because we're bouncing the light. And that really helps us get more contrast, a little bit moodier image. And the other thing I can do is bounce the light from the ceiling. So let me do that really fast. I'm just putting this up. There's a white ceiling here. So Julie, look right at me. Awesome. I love that. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, now again, we have a little bit more contrasty light and you can try doing all kinds of bouncing. As long as you have white walls, this is going to work really well. It won't work very well off of walls that are gray or dark, but most small studios should have light colored walls. Well, there's a better way to bounce light and that is by using something that we have here at the studio. It's called the Gary Fong uh, Light Sphere. So we're going to use that next. All right, well, I've put this light sphere on my 580 EX2. It just sort of squishes on there, and it's this soft rubbery thing. And what it does is it takes the flash and it bounces the light in 180 degrees, actually 360 degrees. It just sort of spreads it everywhere. And so what happens is this light becomes really soft. There's not a lot of shadows, so the light's going to be bouncing off the ceiling and off the wall and just sort of everywhere, and it, it really diffuses the light. Now, the way to use this is you're going to have... Uh, this, your flash, you need to have it sort of vertical like that, sort of like a tomahawk chop. And then what you can do is no matter if you're shooting horizontal or vertical, no matter which way you put your camera, you're going to want to keep that up so that the light is spreading in 180 degrees around you. And so I'm going to take a few pictures using this and you can see that this really will give you a nice soft light. So Julie, let's take a few pictures. So we're going to take some verticals just like that. Beautiful. Love it. Perfect. All right, well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our flash off of our camera and onto a stand. So I use this uh, umbrella adapter that I showed you earlier, and we have our uh, speed light. This is an SB900 on the stand. I've already mounted that. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to put it on remote, and so that way I can control it from my camera using my remote commander. So again, this is the SU800, and it uses infrared to uh, transmit and make sure that that fires. So when I take a picture, the flash that's not on my camera is going to fire. Now there's all sorts of options for doing this. You can use a remote commander like this. My favorite is actually using pocket wizards. And so there's the mini and flex both for Canon and Nikon. We're not using those today because again, we want to try to keep the budget really low. And so we're going to use this instead, which is the nice uh, infrared trigger. Now, one of the problems you might have in this, if you go outside or shoot on location is direct sunlight 
can affect these. And so radio triggers are considered to be a little bit better than this, but we're not going to be using those today just to keep the budget lower and to make it as realistic as possible. All right, so I have this on my uh, stand. Now, the other thing I need to do is mount the umbrella. Now, the umbrella, uh, what you'll notice is there's this little teeny high, tiny hole here, and it's actually at an angle. And you want to make sure that you mount this in the right way so that the angle is pointing up so that when you mount the umbrella, the umbrella is uh, going to be hit right in the middle from the flash. If you mount it the other way, the umbrella is going to be down like that. And so if you find that your umbrella is going down, then your flash is on the wrong side. You need to turn it around and start over. So we're going to put this through here. There's this little screw that holds that in there. And now I have a flash and an umbrella, and this is going to allow me to get really nice soft light. I'm going to move this all over the place to get higher contrast or soft light. And we can use this to get some really nice beauty shots, and so we're going to do that now. So um, right here is Julie, so she's right where she was before. I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. There we go. This is just going to give us a nice soft light, a nice portrait light. And so again, I have my Nikon. This is the D7000. Again, I have it in manual mode. I have it set to a shutter speed of 200 and an aperture value of 5.6. I have increased the ISO. This is now at ISO 400 because when I'm shooting into an umbrella, we don't get quite as much light. So I need to allow the camera to sort of soak in some of that. So I have that all set up. All right. And then uh, the commander is just all set to uh, normal full auto TTL mode with no exposure compensation at all. And we can start shooting. So if you look right at me there, Julie, great. I'm going to zoom in here. Perfect. Let's take another shot. Awesome. All right, well, next up, we're going to do some more dramatic lighting. So we're really going to try to get some vignettes and restrict the light so we can maybe convert these to black and white and get some really interesting shots. And so what we're using is this Honol Photo Speed Snoot. And what it happens is you have this little uh, band of elastic that goes right on your, um, actually Velcro, sorry, it goes on your flash, and it just sort of Velcros right on there. And then you can take this guy, and it will just stick right on there, and you can really restrict the light. So I'm going to swivel this around so I can see what I'm doing. And this will allow us to really constrict how the light is falling. And so we're going to get just sort of a really narrow shaft of light um, that we can direct right at Julie. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to um, point this right at her face and maybe get some vertical shots. And you'll see that we have this really nice vignette and the sides uh, just sort of going to dark. So again, I'm going to have my flash totally on ETTL mode. And I'm using my remote commander. So I'm going to turn this so it's facing Julie, just like that. All right, let's see how that works. So Julie, look right at me. And then we're going to take our first shot. Now the settings on my camera are exactly the same. All right, I'm going to take a shot. And yeah, I really like how that looks. We have that really nice, strong vignette. I love that. Good, good, good. Back up just a little bit. I'm at the very edge of the wall, but you can see this works. I'm shooting with my 55. Cool. These are some really nice shots. And it's all made possible by our speed snoot. Now the thing that we're going to do next is we're going to take the speed snoot and the umbrella and we're going to combine those two things and so we're going to do a two light setup in our tiny little studio. All right, well, we're going to take this umbrella and we're going to take that snoot. We're going to put them together to create a couple of different looks here. And so what I've done is I'm, again, using my remote commander. Now, the nice thing about uh, using an off-camera flash when you have a couple of them, you can set them to different zones, and that's what I've done. And so I have this one on zone B and the guy on the snoot back there in zone A. So I can adjust the power output just a little bit. Now, the guy in the back, it was a little bit too bright, and so I dialed that down to 1 32nd of full power. So I put it in manual mode on my remote commander, and I just dialed it down so I wouldn't have too much light. Now, again, if you don't know how to do that, don't worry. You can learn that in the future. Maybe we'll make a future episode about it. But it's very simple. Just read your user manual, and it'll show you how to do all that stuff. So let me first take a couple pictures of this setup. What we have is we have this light back here. And it's actually going to uh, hit Julie's hair and give us a nice highlight, maybe a little bit on her cheek. And then this other light on this side is going to give us a nice soft fill. So let's start there. So Julie, look right at me. Good. And you can see that we've got that highlight just like we wanted it. But I want a different look. I want to silhouette this background here, actually add a little punch. So I'm going to point the light at the background, not at Julie. And that's going to give me this nice glow around her head. So again, look right at me. Perfect. Good. And you can see that now the light isn't on her hair, it's on the background, but it gives us this nice glow that also helps to separate her hair 
from the actual back wall. So there you have it, five different lighting setups that you can use in a very small home studio, all of them very affordable. We have the on-camera flash where we bounce light around to get some different lighting styles. We also had the Gary Fong on our flash to get some really nice soft light. We had the umbrella that also gave us some nice soft duty light. We had the snoot. And then finally, we had the snoot and the umbrella combined to give us some other options as well. Well, thanks for the question. It was an awesome question, and I hope those tips helped you out. Now, there are a lot of things that you could be asking about what is sync speed and how to use the speed lights and uh, how to use umbrellas and lighting styles and all that kind of stuff. Well, most of that stuff we've already covered in Digital Photography one-on-one -on -one in previous videos. We have a bunch of them. So to see all those videos, make sure you visit the Adorama Learning Center, or if you're watching on YouTube, we have linked a lot of those right beneath me here in the description so that you can go back to those videos and look at those because we We've done a lot and make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of Digital Photography One on One. And if you're like Tom and Rhonda and you have a question about photography or photography gear, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Before we start, get bloop, bloop, well, bloop, bloop. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.